Hello Lorena. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick lesson on uh, how to make the paper mache paste first, okay? Or the paper glue first. Okay, so first, a saucepan, some flour. I never measure it. I just put a quantity of flour in there. About uh, half a cup inside. Some cold water. And you just mix this till it's a... Uh, a bit of a thick paste, not too much water now, don't want it too thin. So mix it up, get rid of the lumps. Of all the glues I've tried over 15, 20 years, this is the best, the cheapest. It's so cheap, it's unbelievable. And uh, it, it, uh, when you use it as glue and you do lots of layers of paper, uh, in the end, it, the paper paper mache, the paper sculpture, it's like wood, it's very, very, uh, very hard, very strong. Okay, so what I've done is, I've got all the lumps out of the flour. You see, it's a bit like a porridge consistency, or a bit too thin, actually. Okay, that's just to mix the flour so to get it liquid. The water. That's cool, I've got the wrong whisk here, so I'm going to change it. I put the cooker on ready and I boiled the kettle. Boiling water, when you add the boiling water to the mixture, the uh, gluten in the flour expands. So you, you start with quite a, a small amount of glue. And as you mix boiling water, the gluten expands. It's still quite liquidy. You see it there. That's about enough. Take it over to the cooker and I put it on a hot hot ring for about a minute or two. Not far. Okay, so which one's on? That one. Okay, I'll switch off for a moment. You can come and look at this. So here it is now. It's on the cooker. It started to boil already. Look how thick, nice and thick that is. Yeah. I take it off, turn off the cooker, okay, and there it is. Now, this is too thick for me to use, so what I do is, I add some cold water, just a bit. It's a bit dangerous to use when it's boiling, so I like to cool it down anyway. But it's nice to use it when it's warm, or at least, uh, you know, very warm. Because the, uh, the whole thing dries better and quicker. There we are, there's the glue, how simple is that? But try not to get any lumps, so whisk it, and if you do get lumps, then put an electric whisk into the mixture and get rid of those lumps. And there you have your paste. Then what I do is I take the paste over into a, and I pour it into a jar, or a dish. My, there's my uh, paste mixture. I put it onto a tray, like so, and a brush, and there we are. That's it, simple as that. That's a great mixture. Right, so we've got our mixture, now I'm going to give you an idea uh, what I do with children sometimes. Uh, take a newspaper and, and sort of make a ball with your hands like that. Okay. And go around, so we've got a round ball. Put some other piece. So, I need some tape, so I'm going to go out the camera shop for a second. And some tape. This is a great tape to use if you can buy this. Uh, we call this in England parcel tape. It's a sticky back stuff. And then, 
basically I just strip it okay around the bowl Alicia made a load of these the other day and they're great because they're, they're quite soft and they're like snowballs and uh, a little bit more tape keep the round shape okay now get some cling film and cover now that stops when you paste this that stops the paper getting all soggy basically you're, you've, you've got it airtight in there I'll put another bit of tape across that There you have a ball. Now, you can make it oval, you could make it a head of a puppet, uh, you can make it into a spider, give it some nice wire legs. It's a number of things you can do with that ball. Okay, so now, how to do the paper. Just take some newspaper. I just cut the spine off. You know newspaper has a grain. I think you understand me, Lorena, by a grain. So, if you tear it one way, goes right across all over the place. If you tear it the other way, you get nice straight lines. Okay? So you might have to turn your paper around like this. And then I just tear off my strips of paper. Okay, I'll just do that now. Push all this away. Paper. Oh. Paper. It's also very delicious to eat. Just a little salt will be nice. No, don't eat. Okay. Then, now what I do first is I, I paste the tray, lay the paper down. If you don't do this, I'll just show you what happens. It's really annoying. Right, there's no paste here. I, I put paste on the paper and it immediately starts to curve like this and you get in a right mess. So if you've got actually some paste on the tape on the tray first, lay the paper on it, it stays nice and flat. And then you apply it. One. When I'm making uh, sculptures with paper, I've been doing it a long time. I work extremely fast. But you need to take the time to begin with. And you can Right, now there's lots of little bits sticking up at the moment. I'm not worried about that just for a minute. Okay, one, two more. There's lots of different methods of getting shapes and form. I use mainly cardboard. Um, I'm able to manipulate that really well. This is easy. I know a lot of children start off with balloons. Balloons is a nightmare for me to get the paper to stay. And then you add three layers on a balloon and the next day you're about to add three more layers and you find the balloon has shrunk. So it goes all over the place. So I don't really bother with balloons ever. Okay, there we have it. Right, now what I would do is, I've given that probably two, maybe three layers. I leave that to dry, get on with something else, and then come back to it later on in the day, or even the next day, and you'll find it's nice and hard. And then put some more layers on it. I normally end up putting about, on something like this, about eight layers. Uh, but when I make my own sculptures, my big uh, sculptures that you saw on the Facebook the other day, there's about 40 layers of paper on top of those things. So there we have a look. So that's just one idea, and I can give you other ideas when I'm less busy, but I, I hope that helps for now. Okay, bye kids, nice to meet you. <laughs>